the Sega Master System, the very first, albeit second-hand, console I ever owned on the face of the earth. We're talking teeny tiny Wee. baby age here. Yes, when life was a simple two-button controller kind of affair, and a time when Sega apparently couldn't give a flying toss about even mildly exciting box art. These days I mostly make use of my Master System converter, but I wanted to go back to the very start of my gaming history. So alright then boy, I am a let em come in it, and won't you join me for this look back over some of my top nostalgic Master System games. And as the title slightly hints at, this is my own personal list, so do let me know your picks in the comments below. Here is number 10. California Games, from its opening rendition of Louie Louie, which has now to do with California, to its glorious 80s surrounds, it's a pure nostalgia trip. Now I can't claim much interest in sports games in the world of video games, but we did own this game, for some reason. And as a child I had no idea what I was doing on this game. And as an adult nothing has changed. You compete in the halfpipe, BMX, Footbag, or hacky sack, I mean, who the hell would call that footbag? Frisbee, skating, and surfing. Back in the day, I was all about the skating and BMXing bits. If I had to play footbag, I was an unhappy chap. But as I said, this list is about pure nostalgia, and you don't have to be good at any of these to feel that. And luckily, I am not. Here is. Number 9! Outrun, the first ever video racing game I'd played. Well, one that was a step up from my neighbour's Tomy Turn in Turbo anyway. Having later in life gone on to play the original Sega Arcade version, this isn't a bad little stab at recreating it I have to say. Sure, the other cars might look like crap compared to the arcade, but this was all about speed, mate. And you have the same brilliant night to day transition stages. I'd even go so far to say that the music isn't too bad by today's standards. The sound effects though, sound like a mouse having a wank. Here is number 8. Tasmania, the first game on the list that I didn't actually own myself. This was my neighbour's game and I vividly remember this ugly yellow background and rather irritating music. But nostalgia be both blind and deaf apparently. Though I'd say Asterix is more faithful to its source in graphics, but we'll get to that in a minute. So the story is as follows, Taz's dad has told him about this island of rare birds, and Taz decides to go there and make a giant omelette out of this rare bird's egg, probably rendering the species extinct. So yeah, Taz is a bit of a bastard really. Though as a child I was obviously oblivious to this, and was happy as Larry with this simple little game. As an adult, this one is probably best left to nostalgia. Oh yeah, and Taz never gets to kill off that species in the end, so take that you greedy twat. Here is number seven. Asterix. I loved this series as a kid. Asterix and Obelix, the boar roasting, beer drinking, Roman punching ghouls. The stuff all good children's comics should be made of. So it stands to reason I had the game. And this is one I believe still holds up today in coming back to it. The lovely colourful palette, great cartoon animation, and upbeat soundtrack are all things I adored as a kid. Even if it was frustrating for me trying to precariously land a potion on this brick to destroy it and I would cry and get someone to help me. Ah, the salty tears of nostalgia. Making use of both fists and jump attacks, this one really does feel like a faithfully interactive comic, and still one that's a good laugh today. Here is number six. Hang on. Here's another great game that was potentially out of my skill set as a child. But I wasn't going to let that stop me running my motorbike into all the objects and opponents repeatedly. For me, what I remember best about this game was the brilliant bright colours. Vivid greens, whites, blues and reds really cemented this game in my memory. And firing this one up again today is a real nostalgic blast. Like many Sega greats, this was an arcade port, as at that time Sega were king of the arcades, and this is as faithful and as fun a job as you could have done here. You still get the cool blending of courses as you do in the arcade version, not that I ever saw any of these courses as a kid, but it's definitely one of the better motorbike racing games on the system. Here is number 5! Ah, now firmly back to games I did own, Sonic. 
Now although the original game was released on the Mega Drive when I was two, we couldn't afford a Genesis till later on. This one was the version I first knew and loved Sonic by. And the nostalgia here for me was all about the sound. From the first 8-bit rendition of his theme tune to this cool electronic jangly stage highlighter jingle, this still sounds badass. And though I may remember the motorbugs being bigger and the levels more complicated than they really are, this is still classic Sonic to me. The music really is a joy in this one, and this version of Sonic is still one of my favourites in the series. Here is number four. This triple whammy of a cartridge was really where it was at for me as a kid. You got three different gun games and the quality Sega Light Phaser, which looks like a cross between a mini black hairdryer and a sci-fi ray gun. I remember after we got rid of the mast system, cutting the cable off this thing and using it as a pretend gun for years as a kid. And here's your three games. Like all good gun games, you shoot the picture to get started. Trap shooting I remember being fairly good at as a kid, and to be fair to the 8-bit graphics, they don't look too bad. Not much to write home about. Shoot clay pigeons to different backgrounds. Canyon and lake look banging. Mark Spurn is like a marksman training shoot, which I didn't play a lot of as a kid, though I do always remember this weird sound when you'd hit the top target. No, where you'll be spending all your time as a kid was on Safari Hunt. And bloody hell, Sega, that's pretty racist. So here we are on Safari, and once you shoot the animals, they actually become food and die. Well, uh, apart from the rabbits, I mean. Look at this poor bear. But the level I always remember was the jungle. Boom, take that, you dirty spider. Boom, take that, you dirty jaguar. Boom, boom, boom. Here is number three. The Ninja. Now this is one hard as nails game. As a child, I had no chance of reading this description and no time for it either. You're a ninja and that's all you need to know. Straight off the bat, this game is merciless. There are ninja stars going everywhere. Think this is a harmless rock? Well, you're wrong. It's a ninja and he's gonna kill you. Then you get this ninja scroll and the game then goes into hyperdrive and it's Happy Hardcore Remix. Then there's these nutcases with swords. Oh yeah, and it's uh, one hit kills. These ninjas seriously don't want you getting their hands on their scrolls. As a matter of fact, I never even saw the second screen as a kid. You gotta have seriously fast lightning reflexes to make it even as an adult. But that being said, it is a really addictive little game, and still to this day, you'll find yourself saying just one more go. No, 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 no! Here is number two. R-Type. Now things are getting seriously off the scale nostalgia-wise. This music was my childhood. I remember every one of these enemies. Ugly baby robot, flying stapler, green bloke. Looking back on this now, it might seem like a slightly basic 2D scrolling shmup, but back then this was pure futuristic apocalyptic dystopian space future. I remember always having to get my brother to help me out with this bit. This bit was hard for a kid. And you would have thought this might have scared me as a child, but not really, uh, though I was told not to show it to the sheltered kids next door. I even came close to beating this thing a few times. Well, with the help of my brother anyway. If you haven't experienced our types and you're into retro games or shoot 'em ups, get yourself a copy of this now. Here is number one. Alex Kidd in Miracle World. I mean, come on. This is the earliest gaming memory I have and the first video game I ever played, so of course it's going to be on the list. The game itself was actually built into the Master System Mark II, so if you booted up without a game in, you'd get Alex. Now this is what I call nostalgia. Yeah, it's uh, pretty nostalgic, mate. One of the things that's securely cemented in my head is the most infectious of any Sega game I know. That is the theme tune. Always made me think it was Alex the Kid, though, with that cheeky extra note. The gameplay itself was actually still really enjoyable, with various different vehicles to buy and smash it through the levels on. I always felt there was a really distinctive Eastern feel to this game too as a child, sort of mystery and intrigue. Also, his main attack is just hilarious. Just pound things to death with your giant radioactive fists. Oh yeah, and he really hates pterodactyls too. And if you are a pterodactyl, he'll fuck you up son. So there you have it, my personal favourite nostalgic picks for the Master System. But what were some of your favourite nostalgic picks? Do let me know in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this episode, do consider subscribing to my channel for a bit more content like this. And for some cool extras and exclusives, do head over to my Patreon, just linked here. 
So until next time, I've been Lennon Come In It, and a thank you and good night. <laughs>